think about why you want to do drag. Because um, something that has always stuck with me, and I heard, I heard uh, Willem say this on the Race Chaser podcast, that people start drag for two reasons. Either they have something they want to share with the world or they want attention. And both reasons are valid, but only one of those reasons makes you like a really good artist. Uh, my name is Sweet Pickles and I live in Richmond, Virginia. Have you been here the whole time? No. Um, born in Georgia, grew up in New Jersey, came to Richmond for college, and I stayed, just stayed, hung out, hung around. How did you get into drag? Um, I started going to gay bars in college, as one does, and actually I caught some of the drag shows um, and I decided I really want to do it because I think I can do exactly what I see the people doing up there and I was heavily discouraged for a while since I am, spoiler alert, not a boy. <laughs> um, so I spent a whole month preparing for my big debut. It was um, at Fallout for uh, the Wicked Wednesday amateur competition. Um, I did the song Crayons by Cupcake, which is all about like pride. It's a really fun song. And um, my partner helped me make an entire like cage skirt out of like wire and crayons. I made a crayon headpiece. I was like, I, I wore a bodysuit that I had stolen from my university's costuming department. <laughs> I just kind of snuck it out before I left. Um, and I was like, yeah, I was like so, so proud of myself and what I had created. And so, yeah, I competed. Uh, and out of all three competitors, I got third. I was devastated. I was devastated. Um, and uh, I cried in my car. <laughs> I cried in my car. I was really, really upset. I was like, well, this just isn't for me. This is just not for me. But um, I, I didn't stop, thank God. I was very close to stopping as soon as I had started but um I didn't so yes yeah, so my first my first show was not like uh you know my drag debut was not necessarily like a happy one because I put too much pressure on myself and I was doing it like to win I was like I'm a champion I'm gonna fucking kill this I did not um but yeah that was my very first one and uh yeah so fallout is the birthplace of sweet pickles I have you know, this amazing fucking costume, this wig that I made, I look so unique and cool and creative. I have shit that I've been practicing. I have props, I have like reveals, I have dance moves, I have all this fucking cool shit. And I was the best one. You know, there's only three of us, but I was clearly the best one. And I still got beat um, by someone who was a cis gay man who happened to have more friends there than I did. And I realized like, oh, this is not, oh, the best person isn't always gonna win. This isn't fair. Um, I, so I do get treated differently by audience members sometimes. Sometimes they think that they have more liberties with me because I am a woman and I physically take up less space than a lot of my male counterparts. Um, I've had people touch me in ways that I've never seen them try to touch my colleagues. I've had people invade my space while I'm performing. But there are some people who, um, you know, uh, being a woman is hard. Like, no matter what you're doing, being a woman is hard. And it's drag is still a male-dominated industry. We may not think of it that way, but it's a male-dominated industry. And so, yeah. It's been said, like, we don't want you in the show. You don't fit, you don't fit the vibe. You don't fit the vibe. You, you, you just won't work for the show. When it feels very obvious what, what they're really saying. And no matter what the, you know, excuse is, the truth, I think, is obvious. Um, and, bitch, if you, if you want to say it, just fucking say it. Mm -hmm. If you don't want me in this cast because of who I am, fucking say that. Because right. I'm good enough to be with you guys. I'm good enough. Everything that I brought to the table has been good enough. I've proven myself. 
And if you're still trying to keep me out, I think we can, we can tell what the reason is behind that. But TikTok, oh my God. I was like, where did you all come from? What are you all doing here? Yeah, all the time I'll get, um, you know, you're not a real drag queen, you're not really doing drag, you can wear as much makeup as you want, but it's not really drag, you're not fooling anybody, it's just, it's just cosplay, like this is something for gay men only, like you're not one of us, no real drag bar will hire you, like no real drag queen will acknowledge you, um, like you'll, you'll, never be, you'll never be this, um, and I've never gotten that before in my life. You know, like I was going to her shows before I really started kind of getting more involved in the drag scene, so I did know who she was and um, you know, I was seeing what she was doing and I, you know, I admired it. Um, and I remember when she, the first time she messaged me offering me a booking, I like, like kind of freaked out. Cause I was like, oh shit, this is like the person who runs all these cool shows that I've been going to. And she wants to put me in one of them. Like that is very fabulous. And I was so freaking nervous before that. I was so nervous leading up to that show because she um, she makes it clear that like she expects excellence from you. So when this opportunity came up, you know, and she told me like extra cheese is gonna end, but you should take the time slot. It was sort of a no brainer. That was like, oh, it's literally being handed to me. Chiggy really doesn't care like who you are, what your style of drag is like your identity politics. She doesn't give a fuck. If she thinks that you can make her some money, she'll put you in a show. Like period, point blank. That tonight is without a doubt in my mind going to be the single best show you have ever been to in your entire life! All right, my regular name is Chase Keach and in drag I perform as Chicky Parm. Um, so I came up with Chicky first. Boy name is Chase plus Nikki Chicky. So we had that. And then um, there's a Parks and Rec quote where Aziz Ansari is describing his funny names for food and he gets to chicken parm and he goes, and chicken parm is chicky chicky parm parm. And I said, that is me. Well, starting from 18, I was a little club rat. I, I love, you know, going out in nightlife and stuff from as soon as I could. But um, I only started drag because I met a drag queen at a party who was very amateur and doesn't exist anymore. And uh, she just kind of got me into it and then I, got into it myself. So no, I was never like an artsy kid. I, I feel like uh, theater is often the um, gateway into drag. I never did anything. I, I literally never did a single artsy thing before drag. Group of Jasmine Cleopatra I mentioned, Amber St. Lexington, Sweet Pickles. I mean, you know, Melanin, London. Like we have some really strong freaking drag performers in the city. And I think it catches people off guard. Um, I don't think people expect us to have such a, a good drag scene. Um, I think it's something that every drag performer wants, like to have your own show. It just seems like a, a rite of passage in a way. So what I would say is you have to understand how social the drag scene is. I mean, we don't have like rules or I mean, it's a, the wild, wild west, the, the business side of drag. It really is. Um, but going to shows, being pleasant, um, meeting people. Yeah, I mean, I definitely knew going into drag that I was gonna have the obstacle to overcome of like, I am the other. And when I'm in the dressing room, I am the other. When I'm in the lineup, I am the other. Like, I don't necessarily look like anyone else. And I don't, my drag is not quite like anyone else's. And that is a good thing and a bad thing. To be clear, I I always feel like a real drag queen. I know right. I'm a real drag queen. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I I know what I do. I know what I can provide in terms of entertainment value. It's other people who look at me and say, "You're not like me. Mm -hmm. You're not like that person. You do something very different." So why are you here with me, even though you're not like me? Right. 
Um, and there are still people who like don't consider me a drag queen, even though like, bitch, do, you, do I not have more makeup on than you? Like, am I not wearing just as many fucking sparkles? Is my hair not just as big as yours? Are my heels not higher than yours? Like what? Right. Come on now. Like, um, but yet there are definitely times where I've just felt just sort of like isolated. What I want is for everyone to know that there's room for everyone. It is that like that there is room for everyone. This is limitless. And gay men are not the only people with something to express. Everyone has a part in themselves that they can explore through drag. Mm -hmm. It's a form of performance. And we don't gatekeep musical theater like this. We don't fucking gatekeep, we don't gatekeep dance like this or, or opera. We don't say, well, you have to be this, this, and this to be able, and we don't do that with those other art forms. Why would we do it with this one?